Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I do have cinnamon in my coffee and this is going to be one of those videos that I do every once in a while where you go, whoa, okay, because I did. And I, if I go, if I go, whoa, I think that you will probably go, whoa, this is one of those. So strap in. It all starts here with Stephen Bull from the DF. He tweeted this out, I think it was last night, yes. Not sure anyone has seen this. U.S. SEC Chair Jay Clayton had a private meeting with Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple, and John Ros Roscoe, Special Assistant to the U.S. President. Now, this is not the woe moment right here. There's actually one or two or three woe moments in here if you're really paying attention. But this is something that we've seen before. I can't remember where we've seen it, but we've seen this before. This is um, chairman of the SEC, Jay Clayton. This is his public calendar. And this is for the, the calendar for August 1st, 2018 to August 31st, 2018. And here is what Stephen Bull from the DF is showing. Meeting with Ripple, including Brad Growinghouse, CEO, David Schwartz, Chief Techno Technology Officer, and John Roscoe, Special Assistant to the President, White House Office of the President, Presidential Personnel. Okay, so there it is. You got Ripple meeting with the SEC chairman. Now, remember, this is in 2018. It's August. The meeting is August 20th, 2018. And I went and pulled it up. This is the actual calendar you're looking at here. August 20th, 2018. All right. Well, here's where things get fun. I decided that I would go and say, okay, well, David Schwartz is all over Twitter all the time. What was David Schwartz tweeting about around this time? And I think that that will provide you the answer to what the meeting was about. And that's, this is your first kind of woe moment. All right. Here's David Schwartz on the same day, August 20th, 2018. He's in a debate with someone on Twitter. Why do you say XRP is not decentralized? So now remember, all of this is against the backdrop in 2018. Well, XRP could be called a, a security. And I've told you all the reasons I thought that was a ridiculous thing to even bring up. Well, I also said back in 2018 that I think that to provide the SEC cover and to provide certain people cover, it, they had to be able to say that they gave Ripple a list of things they needed to check off in order to, cons to be considered not a security. That's what I think this meeting was about. I think more specifically, the meeting was about um, further decentralization of XRP. And there's two things to, to get out of that. And that is, well, one is their meeting with the SEC chairman. For some reason, he wants to help them walk through this. Um, and, and two, watch what happens after the meeting. So on the day of the meeting, um, David Schwartz is thinking about de decentralization. Well, look what happens. This is two days, August 22nd, 2018. He get looks like he gets back home or to the office, and he, and he tweets this. I just published a post on the inherent decentralization of the XRP ledger, a passion of mine. And this is the report. This report is important for a couple of reasons. You'll see August 22nd, two days after a meeting with the SEC chairman, and don't forget, there's a representative from Donald Trump's office, the president of the United States. But if you look down, he, he, it's a whole article about decentralization. And but he talks a lot in here about Bitcoin and Ethereum. And remember, Donald Trump has tweeted out that he does not like Bitcoin. OK, and I think Treasury Secretary Mnuchin has said that Bitcoin is considered a national security threat. Right. Um, says here, Bitcoin and Ethereum are currently viewed as the gold standard for decentralization, meaning they are architected in a way that no single individual or minor minority group can dictate rules or rewrite the transaction history, the power of blockchain. Since these blockchains are considered decentralized, 
then by design, the XRP ledger is also, if not more so, decentralized than Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then he goes on and he talks about, you know, different things about them, but he really hones in on this. With Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, Ethereum, a surprisingly small number of miners could collude to disrupt the system. As of today, four mining groups currently control 58% of the Bitcoin network and three miners account for 57% of Ethereum's daily capacity. Further, 80% of the mining on Bitcoin blockchain is centralized in China, despite the country's ban on digital assets. This puts it at a greater risk of being manipulated by a single sovereign government. Some experts even suggest that it is a that in a worst case scenario, miners of Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchains could use th this to their advantage, conspiring to rewrite history on the blockchain through a 51% attack that results in verified transactions being unvalidated and allows for fraud to occur. And then he presents this chart where it, sh it shows the control. And then it shows how Ripple runs only 7% of the validators on the XRP ledger, making the point that it is it is more decentralized, so, so he's, but he's selling it. That's the point. And it's not just David Schwartz selling it. On August 23rd, the very next day, three days after the meeting with the SEC, Ripple retweets his article and says, in case you missed it, Joel Katz analysis of decentralization across networks. So they're all selling it, right? Now, remember, we saw Brad Garlinghouse come out a lot, a lot, and, and he would use that same example about how 80% of the Bitcoin mining is controlled by China. Now, this is one of the ripple drops, and this is David Schwartz uh, later. This is 2019. He tweets this out and he tells you what he was focused on in 2018. To give us the lowdown on all the open positions Ripple has around the world. Stay tuned for the drop. Uh, David, as one of the original architects of the XRP Ledger, uh, what are the biggest changes that you've seen um, in the last year? Oh, it would definitely have to be the increase in decentralization, uh, becoming more decentralized than either Bitcoin or Ethereum. And so the network now is operationally decentralized in a way that those other cryptocurrencies just aren't. David, how does Bitcoin or Ethereum differ from XRP? The biggest difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum and the XRP ledger is proof of work versus consensus. Bitcoin and Ethereum use proof of work, which hasn't delivered on its promise of decentralization the way consensus has. Uh, they also have much, much higher latency. So a Bitcoin transaction, you're looking at between 10 minutes to an hour to become confident that the transaction will succeed versus on the order of five seconds with the XRP ledger. Okay. So that was David Schwartz. So, so you can see, it's very clear to me that the SEC had to left, um, they left the SEC with their wall, their papers to go. And yes, decentralization is the theme. This is what it has. You have to be seen as decentralized or this doesn't work. That's my opinion. Now let's look at this other guy. I wanted to look just for curiosity's sake. I wanted to go look at. John Roscoe, who was the special assistant to the president, White House Office of Presidential Personnel, he was there. But before I get to him, I did want to complete a point. Now, remember, so they've got they've got a White House representative there at the meeting. What this reminded me of, and this is all the same thing. Remember, this is from um, October 12th of 2018. Just a few months after David Schwartz and Brad Garlinghouse and that guy from the White House met. And I remember this. This is from Breaker Magazine. This is Corey Johnson, who at the time was the spokesperson for Ripple. And there was a question in here that I've shown you before. Right here. Do you have a sense of what the Trump administration thinks about the product like Ripple? When I started to meet with people, da, 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 it goes on and then it says, the White House in particular seems to be thinking about what it means to have 80% of Bitcoin mining taking place in China and a majority of Ether mining taking place in China. When you look at XRP, there is no, there is no mining. So, so from a foreign control aspect or from an environmental aspect, XRP is a very different beast. And in the conversations we've had with the administration, they seem to get that and think that might matter. Okay, so now we know where this could have come from, but the whole theme is that proof of work doesn't work and that proof of work is more controlled uh, by whoever controls the mining. And, and it's like that they had to prove that the XRP ledger was decentralized. Now let's go back. John Roscoe, who is this guy? I wanted to look at him. I couldn't find out a lot about the guy, but 
And now I want to remind you here, um, in my opinion, there's at least two or three aha moments. You've already seen one in this video, but there's going to be, there's a video I'm going to show you at the end of this that's going to blow your mind. And it's boss. It's a guy that I don't think that I don't think is even a fan of rip or XRP that's talking. And that's why it blew my mind. And you are going to be blown for sure on the third one. I'm going to give you a couple more blow your minds here too. I think, um, now, um, so, so this John Roscoe, I, I started searching around for him. And this is one of the first things that came up is when he was leaving the white house as being one of the council to, uh, he was with the White House, the White House Office of Presidential Personnel. But then this, this was one of the first things that came up about the guy, the Federal Housing Finance Agency. Now, before I go into all this, I want to remind you, I've told you a thousand times, all of this was hatched, including Bitcoin and XRP. All of this was hatched from the financial crisis. And what were the two core problems that had, that came out of the financial crisis? One was liquidity. We had a liquidity problem and it, the at ground zero of the financial crisis was was the mortgage crisis the derivatives mortgage backed securities freddie may fannie mac that was at ground zero of the whole crisis that was the thing those were the things that had to be fixed that's what i've always believed digital assets were about is this was the, the solution to what they finally said we've got a huge problem all right so this comes up when I'm looking for John Roscoe's first line, the FHFA, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, today announced that John Roscoe has been appointed as chief of staff effective February 4th. Roscoe will report directly to Joseph Odding. Well, this was red flag city. Um, it says he became the, the acting director of the FHFA on January 7th. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Joseph Odding, you may remember. He is the comptroller of the currency. And apparently Congress was keeping Trump from appointing the guy he wanted to appoint to this position. And so temporarily he put Joseph Odding, who is, is the comptroller of the currency in charge of this FHFA. And now you got the guy who's in the meeting with Ripple, who's going to go and work for him. Okay. Now, what does all this mean? Well, here we go. What is the FHFA? I just wanted to show you what their really what it, what their mission is, what they're supposed to do. FHFA strategic goals: one, ensure safe and sound regulated entities; two, and this is the one that matters: ensure liquidity, stability, and access in housing finance. And so, this coming out of that financial crisis, this would be the place that that wants to help solve <laughs> we had a, a housing crisis and we had a liquidity crisis and they happen to be responsible for, to ensure liquidity stability and access and we got now now there's other parts of this that are tied in look at this so trump names this odding as acting director of the fhfa he names the guy who's the head of the the um who's the comptroller of the currency well there's a couple of things here that you need to, to remember. This is him right here. And you might remember who this guy is. I'm about to remind you. Um, you remember this? Remember a few weeks ago when we were talking about this guy, Brian Brooks? Brian Brooks is leaving the cryptocurrency exchange to become the C chief operating, um, or, okay, Coinbase chief legal officer. Brian Brooks has been appointed chief operating officer of the office of the comptroller of the currency. The Treasury Department announced on March 16th, Brooks will also serve as the first deputy comptroller. Starts April 1st. This guy was appointed by Steve Mnuchin. And the interesting thing is that both of those guys, there, there is Brian Brooks and there is Odding, okay, this is the, the guy in charge. He's the comptroller of the currency, and he is now the deputy. He comes from Coinbase. Mnuchin, they were all at One West Bank. Now, remember what One West Bank is. In the, after the financial crisis, Mnuchin, who I believe was able to buy IndyMac Bank, with the, which was also at the center of the financial crisis, I believe he was able to buy IndyMac Bank for nothing, financed probably by somebody like Goldman Sachs, who he used to work for. I believe he, he was able to buy that bank for almost nothing and then turn it around. He renamed it One West Bank, and then he told it, and then he sold it 
to CIT Bank, right? Now, and then you'll remember at CIT Bank, he, uh, Stuart Alderati became the general counsel when, when Steve, when Steve Mnuchin sold CIT Bank, he had Stuart Alderati as the general counsel of that bank while he was on the board. He became the general counsel while Steve Mnuchin was on the board. And then, of course, later, after Steve Mnuchin goes to the tre to be the treasury, treasury of the, the secretary treasury, Stuart Alderati goes to Ripple as general counsel. Um, and then, okay, so, so let's go back to the FHFA, which is where this Roscoe guy that was in that meeting with Brad Gronkowski and David Schwartz on August 20th of 2018. The FHA, uh, I was just searching around, what does the FHFA have to do with cryptocurrencies, if anything? FHFA, um, these are two people that they appointed. The first person that they appointed um, is this Thea Knight. Knight comes uh, to the FHA from the SEC, where she served as counsel to the SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce. And that would be this Hester Pierce, who is all about cryptocurrency. She's called Crypto Mom. She's about as pro-cryptocurrency as it gets, okay? That's the same Hester Pierce that she worked for, okay? Now, here's what else she did. Um, she was at the Cato Institute, which I'll show you in a second. But look right here. She was, her experience also includes co-founding and serving as general counsel of a financial services startup, serving as investigative counsel for the Congressional Oversight Panel for TARP and several years in private practice with this firm. But she was counsel for general oversight panel of TARP. Well, you know who else was involved in TARP? Well, this is the clip from, this is the wiki for the Bank of New York Mellon, which I've told you, BNY Mellon. In October 2008, the U.S. Treasury named BNY Mellon the master custodian of the TARP. So we've talked all about BNY Mellon on this channel. So let's go back to this. Okay, so that's the first lady. And she <laughs> she was counsel to SEC commissioner that is the person who is who is working on cryptocurrency at the SEC. And then there was this other person, Lydia Mashburn. Now, Lydia Mashburn, this is the, she was also at the Cato Institute, which I think is ground zero for a lot of this. But look what she she worked on. She developed and managed strategy, research, portfolio, communications, and outreach in the areas of monetary policy, banking, regulation, securities regulation, housing finance, consumer finance, fintech, and cryptocurrencies. Well, what do you know? So let's look at their resumes and see if there's anything else interesting. Both of them are at the Cato Institute. Now remember, Cato Institute, and I've told you on this channel, I've shown you all of them, Brookings Institute, Cato Institute, these are the think tanks. This is where the powerful people set all of this in motion. The, Econ the Economic Club of New York, or whatever it was called, same thing. These, This is where everything gets put in motion. Now, this is that Thea Knight. This is her resume. See, she was at the SEC, Cato Institute. Let's see if it was, she was on this Congressional Oversight Panel for TARP. Okay. And then we will go to Lydia Mashburn. She was Deputy Chief of Staff at the Federal Housing Fund. That's where she is now. Okay. She was at Cato. Let's see if she did anything else interesting. She was in the House of Representatives, United States Congress Joint Economic Committee. Um, that's about all that's interesting there. Now, um, who, this is the guy that the Odding guy temporarily ran this thing and he ran it. But before this guy, this is the guy that Trump wanted to appoint. Well, now he's nominated by in, in January 2019. He was confirmed by the U.S. Senate, Senate in April. To, so he just uh, in April 2019, he got confirmed. His name is Mark Calabria. OK, so I decided let's look at his LinkedIn page. Director now, that's where he is, chief economist to the vice president at the White House from 2017 to 2019. And before that, director at the Cato Institute. Well, the Cato Institute just keeps on coming up, doesn't it? Well, I looked up Cato Institute and cryptocurrency, and let's just start scrolling down the page. This is from April 12, 2016. This has all been planned. It's all connected. Cryptocurrency, the policy changes of, of a decentralized revolution. All right. 
let's go down and see if we recognize anybody that's on this page. And this was a um, this was apparently like a, a thing they did 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on this day. And they had all these people from cryptocurrency. Well, let's go down and see if we recognize anyone. There's Jerry Brito. If you remember him, he was uh, I, I showed you a video. He's from Coin Center and he, he's the executive director at Coin Center. Jerry Brito. Uh, and you know who else is on, on the board at Coin Center? That would be Susan Athey, who's on the board of directors at Ripple. Okay. I'm just tell, show, I'm just shouting out some of the connections I know off the top of my head here. Uh, whoop, there's Christopher Giancarlo. He's the guy that was from the CFTC. He's also the guy, and I've shown you the article. He's the guy who, um, th that was basically told we create these Bitcoin futures to tank the price of Bitcoin. And he said it in an article on Coindesk. You go look it up. I've already shown it to you on this channel. But he's the guy that did that. Do you know who else he is? He's the guy who's at the, the head of the Digital Dollar Foundation to create a digital dollar, which is back, which is backed primarily by Accenture, which is one of the first investors in Ripple. And if you think Accenture's not important, go to Google and type in Fourth Industrial Revolution because Accenture is the first company that will come up. Pretty interesting, huh? As you go down, um, let me, let's keep going down up ooh, at 1130 to 1230 here at the Cato Institute back in 2016. We got Jacob Barber, who's general counsel at R3. Remember, R3 Court of Settler uses XRP. Um, and then we've got, um, ooh, look, Ryan Zagone, director of regulatory relations at Ripple. And there he is, Ryan Zagone. He's at the Cato Institute. Um, presenting um, there at the Cato Institute. I don't know if there's anybody else that's interested. Oh, there's somebody else interested. The Monetary Ch Challenge. Perry Ann Boring, remember, she runs the digital, um, the, uh, what's it called? The um, digital, uh, it's an organization in D.C. It's a, the, the, oh, here it is right here. Chamber of Digital Commerce and the G Chris Giancarlo is there. And remember, Chamber of Digital Car Commerce is also connected to the DC Blockchain Summit, which Brad Garlinghouse was on the homepage of until we started talking about it on this channel. Then his face disappeared off of that. By the way, I, um, Perry Ann Boring follows me on Twitter. And the other day, I, I said I wanted to, I, I reached out to her in a direct message just to, just to see if she would reply to me because I kept running into her. Remember, we ran into her, the Bretton Woods uh, 75th anniversary. She was at the podium and she was talking about how um, the, the she was having a debate about a new world reserve currency and she was arguing the position that it should be a digital currency. Well, I reached out to her on Twitter. She does follow me, but she did not reply to my direct message. And I'm not offended by that. I just find it interesting. Um, okay, but here's, she is, and, and by the way, if you look at her LinkedIn, she was an intern at the White House back in the day. Um, and then as we go down, let's see if there's anybody else that jumps out at I me. Mean, I just thought a lot of these were interesting. Um, now, let's fast forward. This is 2016. Let's fast forward to 2018, and let me show you this. This is Ryan Zagone on stage. This is in September. This is from Bank XRP, by the way. Um, Cato Institute, Center for Monetary and Financial Alternatives. Okay, so he's at the Cato Institute again. All right. This is not some Yahoo organization, folks. This is where the powerful people plan stuff. Okay. All right. Now, this, now we're moving on to another topic. And this is another aha. I just happened to bump into this this morning. I was playing around on the website of Max, Maxine Waters leads the U.S. House Committee on Financial Services. This committee, these people are the at the, the top of the food chain for the finances of the United States. There's a search thing on their website, folks. And over here, you can search for different events. And then they've got different issues that they cover at their different events. And I could not believe my eyes when I saw it, but they talk about budgets. They talk about the CFTC, community banks, um, the events, current events, credit reports, scores, cybersecurity, all kinds of different issues. Why in the 
H-E-L-L is one of their issues, U.S. debt default. Can you explain that one? Because I can't. Well, I want to give proper credit here because Brad Combs has been talking for the last month at least, probably longer than that. If you don't listen to this guy, he's a friend of mine and he's very smart, okay? He's at 12 point set. He's way under the number of subscribers that he should have. This guy is a, is a 40, 60,000 subscriber guy. And if you don't subscribe and listen to him, he does a live stream every morning. I think he does one live stream and he, he also does pre recorded videos. Uh, a good guy, but he's, but he's very smart and he's got some very smart people that he, Cryptopolis comes on his channel almost every Friday. Um, he's, he's got, Mickey B. Fresh comes on. I mean, he's got some very smart people and he talks about some very smart topics. And I'm telling you, if you don't listen to him, go listen, start, give him a subscribe and start listening to him because he's been, he's been, he called this debt jubilee is what it's called. He's been talking about how we are in a controlled bankruptcy of the United States. Now, it might be the world too, but I believe, and Brad also believes, that, that the bankruptcy of the country is going to roll into this new financial system that involves digital assets and more specifically XRP, the greatest digital asset ever created. Now, I'm about to play you a video that's going to freaking blow your mind. And so get ready and it all ties into this. But so, and I provided this to Brad this morning. He, he was like, whoa. I mean, this is it right here, folks. It's going to happen. We don't, I've said it for the last year or two. They cannot pay off the debt. There is going to be some type of debt jubilee where debts, the United States, forget. I don't know how it's going to go down. But anyway, all right. So Brad um, has been talking about this. Now, um, I, Brad also talked about the video I'm about to show you. And this, I'm telling you, this is, you're talking about an aha moment. Um, Sir Get Gordon Gecko, who you ought to follow at Gordon Gecko 369. He's the one that found this, and then Brad played it on his show this morning. I'm going to play this thing now. Now, folks, I don't know who this is, okay? But everything that we you want, you want everything the light bulbs to go off. Listen to this and listen good. Stop everything you're doing and listen to this video. The guys that are talking are not even Ripple fans. But the guy, the only thing I picked up in here, and then I, after I show you this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, bring in some things we've talked about before to reiterate the guy's point. But, but uh, the one thing I got out of this is that this guy's in Washington D.C. I did hear him say something about how he's in Washington D.C. Listen and listen good, folks. With what what you were just reading and where that's going to go. Right. So what does Swift Swift uses? They will be using blockchain technology that is uh, partnered with. They use the Cordis Settler, which is part of R3, which is Consortium of Banks. Mm. R3 uses XRP for settlement. R3, it's, it's a rumor that R3 and RIP was just bought out by Ripple. It's a rumor that hasn't been announced yet. I don't know if it's true, but from what I'm hearing... That's what happened. Now, on top of all of this uh, trade war talk and the going back and forth, you have Ripple meeting with the highest uh, members of the Chinese financial sector, and they're establishing an office in Shanghai. So, hey, check this out. I heard, I heard Libra today. I just heard that's going belly up, and everybody's pulling out of it. Absolutely. That was all that was was – because you had uh, these corporations that you know wanted to get into banking to be able to do that, it basically scared you know all of these guys to get on board with this new system that's coming out. And it, I'm, you know, could be. I think it's you know a good chance it happens this year, you know, at the latest maybe quarter one. But it's it's going to be backed by gold. They're gonna. It's gonna be digitized gold. Mm. They're gonna. It's. They're, we have a liquidity crisis. Hey, I'm gonna pause for one second. Digitized gold. 
This is Rachel Lee that I've been talking about recently who disappeared from Twitter, by the way. Some people ask a silly question or make a silly statement like, why would IMF buy the XRP from Ripple or force Ripple to hand it over? It doesn't work like that. Ripple is creating digital gold. With the help of the globalists, this is a part of the deal. Hand it over. Chris Larson and Arthur Brito get to be trillionaires. Others get to be multi-billionaires. And you and I get to keep a slice of the pie as well. Ripple has no other use for the 50 billion escar plus XRP and escrow. All you have to do is sit back and watch it all play out like a movie. We'll continue. Coming. If you look at, you know, prior on the Ripple website, they offered three services you know, there was X Current, which was kind of a stepping stone using fiat. As you went up the ladder, you know, they you get introduced to using uh, their their liquidity tool, which is called X Rapid, that uses yeah. XRP. Well, they just scrapped that whole thing. So if you go to their website, you'll see it's called on demand liquidity. Okay, yeah. this hey, is hold what on they're going to do. And then you've had all this pumping into the system over the last what month hundreds of billions 45 billion hundreds. a day or something yeah yeah and it's and, been a, hey, it's take an the, look at this look at this at the top of zero head central bank issues stunning warning if the entire system collapses gold will be needed to start over and then people are talking about gold getting moved on to military bases it's pretty wild right and you had judy shelton who was uh named to the federal reserve uh board of governors who is a uh advocate of a modernized gold standard this is what's being hashed out behind the scenes and i i think all the rest of this crap is smoke and mirrors and and this is what you know they're going to roll out i think it will be some you know either the i there's the imf is involved there's the asian investment Instru uh, infrastructure bank and you have the bank of international settlements and i think what's going to happen is that you're, you'll have you know, this, you know, super national, national agency that will be overlooking this, this, uh, new system. Like I said, they, they use the meme or, you know, level playing field everywhere you go when you look into this stuff. This is, that was coined by Brad Garlinghouse at, at Ripple and all the little minions out there are just repeating it. And so I let me mean, ask you this: no what, what, What's the what's the feeling in your gut going to be for the regular old American like you or I? Haircut on our our currency? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do. I I think uh, you're going to see. Uh, I think what they're figuring out now is uh, the dollar's not going anywhere. It's just not going to be the medium for international exchange anymore. And I think, uh, you know, it, we're going to, yeah, take a haircut. I think it's going to be pretty bad for, you know, average Joe is not going to, you know, it's not going to turn out well for him, yeah. any of us really. Well, you see, you see the, the world travel is so rapid. Everybody jumping around from country to country and so forth. I mean, I, I can see how these, these people that want to implement this, this electronic, basically mark of the beast system, uh, are really, really pushing this, and and they've got their reasons for it. But you know, it's it's really the going to be the enslavement of us all, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I mean that's where it's going. Like I said, uh, you know, we're all supposed to have a digital ID uh, identification here. Uh, the plan was, you know, ID twenty twenty. You know, we all have our uh, digital ID. You know, you, now you, you you got money is moving as fast as you know uh, emails, and yeah. you know it's, it's it's where it's all going. Well, you know, the there I was at the DMV or the you know the license office here, and there are all these people getting their real IDs, uh, you know, their little upgrade into a real ID so they can travel and so forth with their with their ID and you know get on planes and all this stuff. Uh, you know, for domestic flights and so forth. Yeah, we we have it here, Washington. You know, we there's not a lot of good things that we can say about uh, our state government here anymore. But uh, we were one of the last ones, as far as uh, so are we. Trying so are to we. join up with the real Real ID Act. I mean, it's the only 
maybe the only positive thing you can say about Washington State, you know, in the last 10 years. Yeah, so so you're saying that the basically Ripple's going to be the king in this whole thing, huh? Yeah, I think I think what happened was uh, that uh, you had guys like at the International Monetary Fund, I think they, they saw an opportunity and hijacked it. You know, it's not so much, you know, Ripple's just the software company, but, you know, they've, I think they've got like 50% of the coins are in escrow, and I think those are already been, uh, you know, allocated to one of these big institutions that are, will that will control this uh, thing. And I think I don't know how they'll figure it out. Somehow gold is tied into it, whether it's based on a country's GDP or you know natural resources or or something, but. Uh, yeah, they've been, you know, that's the, that's the, you know, the the wheels um, that are going to be driving this thing is yeah. that, well, you is know, that technology. Yeah, well, you know, Estonia is really out the forefront, Sweden right behind them, and then they're trying to pump this crap onto the poor people in India. But, uh, yeah, Estonia and Sweden seem to be the countries to really watch with this uh, – whole electronic B system going uh, to cover their entire uh, societies. Yeah, and another one that nobody, Luxembourg is oh, yeah. another one. Folks, there's three things in this video um, that I have never heard before. The first is that um, Ripple has poten is potentially buying R3. That's the first thing. You're about to hear the next two. That we should look for. Uh, Chris Larson, who is one of the founding members, uh, has, he's on the board up there in, in Luxembourg. And if you read the uh, IMF, uh, in, their, with, in order to get into the basket of uh, currencies to be on the SDR, you have to have at least one country that um, adopts it, the, a digital asset. If it were to be into you know, into that basket that one country would have to adopt it. In um, Luxembourg and a little uh, country called Liechtenstein is uh -huh. are the two uh, countries that I've heard uh, mentioned. That, uh -huh. You know, I don't know. Well, yeah, John. That's the other. Th those two things I've never heard that in all the time. That in order to become an SDR, now and I've heard that there's certain qualifications to, to become an SDR in the SDR to be in the SDR basket. What I've never heard is someone say that that a country had to accept it and then name Luxembourg and Liechtenstein at the two countries. Okay, I'm going to let you finish this, and then I'm going to show you some, a couple of things I've shown you before about where Ripple and Liechtenstein are involved. Oh, Paul he Junker, the, the heavy heavyweight from the EU, the guy, the drunk that wears no socks and one sock and stuff, he's, he's the uh, big heavyweight over there in Luxembourg as well, too. Yeah, absolutely. And then you just had, um, you had Christine Lagarde, who was, um, I mean, she is a, uh, a ripple disciple. I mean, her uh -huh. and the CEO are, are, you know, two peas in a pod, but she just got, uh, you know, I don't know, I guess technically it's a, uh, you know, a step up the ladder, but she's now over at the European uh, Central Bank. She took over for Mario Draghi. And sure, so, sure. Uh, I think she's going to, you know, be pushing that. Uh, Mark Carney is another, you know, another disciple. You know, he was out there at uh, Jackson Hole calling for a new global currency to replace the dollar. You didn't hear, you didn't hear anybody, uh, you know, attacking him. You know, when he made that statement, usually, you'll, you know, um, Mnuchin or Trump will come after anybody that you know takes a shot at the dollar, but no one said anything. And that, and they, uh, Bank of England. He was the Bank of England governor. And they've been a Ripple customer since 2015. So, you know, you can see where all the minions are, you know, getting put Lining in up. place. All right, there you go. And all of that's true. Everything the guy's saying we've been talking about, we are not crazy. All of this is connected. 
we've been right all along and everything that he just said in that is cuckoo crazy sounding but it's all true <laughs> and watch this now he mentioned that 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 part about ripple buying r3 you're talking about game set match if that's true now i don't know if it's true but if that is true that's game set match now um also he said that one of a country would would have to adopt what he's talking about is xrp as a currency before they could put it in the sdr basket and let it be a reserve currency now he mentioned the luxembourg and he mentioned the Liechtenstein, which we have talked about a lot on this channel well let's show you luxembourg first no Liechtenstein first this is a picture of brad garlinghouse uh, and the guy from the Liechtenstein Crypto Assets Exchange. Um, and this is at Swell. I don't remember which Swell this is, but it, it looks like, okay, 2018 Swell. He was there. All right. Monty Metzger. We've talked about him before. All right. And then we've got same guy, Monty Metzger at Ripple headquarters with Ethan Beard, CEO and uh, founder of LCX is from Bond Crypt. Um, we are excited to work with the leaders of crypto and blockchain industry. Thanks, Ripple, Ethan Beard, for your engagement and all the support. Great news. And then Luxembourg. Remember this? Chris Chris Larson, he is with the, um, the prof professional account of Luxembourg, Minister of Finance. Excellent exchange of views with Chris Larson. Looking forward to further development of Ripple, Luxembourg, and Europe. And then there was this. The same guy goes to Ripple headquarters. Good meeting in San Francisco with the CEO of Ripple, who obviously likes Luxembourg. I would too, by the way. See his glasses and where the company does uh, R&D. Um, and then finally, um, I wanted to show you this. This was also from Sir, Gorgek, Sir Gordon Gecko. He retweeted this. Chris Giancarlo, Rudder's right. This is David Rudder, CEO of R3. R3 boss, the current events could accelerate the deployment of the of new tech, you think? All right, now, folks, uh, we're at the end of this. I want to remind you, go in the description of all my videos. There is a, up. you can save up to 27%, up to 27% discount on these Ledger family packs they're doing now. So if you're needing a Ledger to store your digital assets safely offline, go get one. There's, they've still got these discounts going. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family. That there, this guy says there's a rumor that Ripple bought R3 or is buying R3. Thanks for listening.